Do you want to be a better dungeon master? Me too. Hi, William Tramp, also known as This FNGM here, ready to talk to you about, well, safety tools, I guess. Um, this is not a video about what safety tools are. This is not a video about me telling you you should or shouldn't use safety tools. This is a video where I am going to be sharing with you a very personal anecdote um, that has helped me become a better dungeon master. Um, and it involves the use of safety tools. Now, the reason why I'm having this conversation in the first place is in the new Dungeon Master's Guide for 2024, there is a passage on page 16 about limits in play. And it reads, since D&D is improvisational, the game can go in unexpected directions. It's helpful to have an agreed upon signal that players can use to communicate that a limit has been violated, allowing you to adjust quickly. That signal might be a gesture, such as crossing the arms in an X or raising a palm in a stop gesture, a code word or phrase, touching or lifting a designated object, or anything else your group agrees upon. Players should also feel safe to say stop and pause the game until the issue is resolved. The person who invokes the signals can comment on what they want adjusted, but doesn't have to explain why the content is objectable. The content shouldn't trigger a debate or discussion. Thank the player for being honest about their needs, set the scene right, and move on. Some people um, have found that inclusion in this book very offensive. I don't know why. I don't really care why. Um, I personally don't find it offensive in the least. Uh, but regardless of what you think about that inclusion in this book, and I'm not here to debate that. I am here to tell you why I have adopted these signals at my own table. Um, I, I got started playing Dungeons and Dragons years ago. I've been playing this game for uh, well over 20 years now at this point. And I, for the longest time, did not see a need or a use for anything involving safety tools. We didn't even have a session zero, right? Um, you know, when people started talking about X cards and lines and veils, my immediate gut reaction was that why do people need to have special tools in play to facilitate a simple social interaction? Just don't be a dick, right? It's, and and <laughs> it should be that easy, I, I would think to myself. But that was born from um, a number of experiences of mine um, that I had had. But most importantly, my inability to see beyond that was born from me not having certain very common experiences to others, but I'd never had those experiences. I didn't, I never played in public before. I have played uh, tabletop role-playing games with the same group of people, um, not the same group of people, but with, you know, close personal friends. I rarely would invite strangers to my table, and I rarely would play with strangers, right? I would play with people who know me um, in and outside of the game, who have been a part of my life for a significant period of time. I wasn't willing to you know, subject my players to some rando, right? You know, I, I, I just gained with the people that I knew already and I did not take many chances on other people. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's just how I did it, right? And that's perfectly fine if we are gaming with our friends, the people we care about. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to go play in public, right? You don't have to play with people you don't know. I will say it's great um, and I'm glad that I've started doing it, but, you know, to each their own, right? So... I did not see the need for these types of tools. Um, you know, they didn't really come up. And about a year and a half ago, and this is where I'm going to start telling my very personal story. And so, uh, you know, feel free to skip ahead if you'd like. Um, about a year and a half ago, my little brother, um, 10 months younger than me, Shane, uh, took his life, killed himself, um, unalived himself, as the kids say, right? Uh, it was the day after his birthday, February 18th, uh, 2023. Uh, I'm sorry. His, he, he died on his birthday, February 17th, 2023. And on February 18th, Saturday, I was out to dinner with my wife and I got a text message from my mom saying, Hey, we haven't heard from your brother since yesterday. Please go in and check. Please, like, like, have you heard from him? Now, 
my brother had a history of suicide attempts. Um, there were probably about three or four occasions where in the middle of the night, I would get a message from him, a very cryptic message, saying something along the lines of, tell the, gr- tell the girls I love them, um, talking about my daughters or something. And that was sort of a signal for me to jump out of bed, run to my car, and drive as fast as I could across town to his house. Because the first time he sent me that text from his car, which he had left on in his garage, um, and was trying to uh, finish the job via, you know, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. The second time I got that message, he I got to his same same garage. Um, he was hanging from the rafters. Um, he was still alive, and I managed to pull him off of a noose <laughs> right in time. Um, anyway, so when my mom sent me that message on February 18th, 2023, I I did what I always do. I, I got in the car, and I started driving as fast as I could to his apartment, because at this point, he lived in an apartment. And, um, and my mom had told me, do not go to his house, um, cause she, she was getting a bit of the, uh, that dread, you know? Um, so I did, uh, I got to his house, I banged, or his apartment, I banged on his door, he wasn't answering, I, I called him, I texted him, I then eventually just broke into his damn apartment, <laughs> and, um, what I found was that I did not get there in time, um, at all, uh, I missed him by a day. Um, it was a horrible day, uh, worst day of my entire life so far, right? Uh, how does this relate to gaming? Um, so I I was involved in like three or four gaming groups at the time. Um, and I, I took a break for a while. Uh, I really needed to. And when I got back to one of my games, um, my game master, uh, he was fully aware of the situation and, um, he and I had talked about it and, we came up with a signal to use because the thing is, is he had a large table, right? You know, there are seven people at that table, a couple of which were friends, but most of them were people that I was just becoming friends with. And I was not quite ready to trauma dump on a whole group of people, um, but I also really needed to get out of my house, right? Um, I needed to be around people I cared about, even if I wasn't always at that time the best person to be around and um, so we came up with a signal and if I was starting to feel a bit uncomfortable that uh, I would just let him know now I know some people might say why don't you just get up and walk away from the table I I could have done that but I also know as a dungeon master that it is even more distracting when people just get up and walk away from the table so either way the point is that we together came up with a signal that I would give if things were getting a bit too hairy. And in this particular game, um, we were playing medieval horror fantasy and people, uh, when they were, you know, killed by, uh, when they were tried for high crimes against the, you know, against the nation, they would be hung. And that's, you know, that's that's a part of the world. And I knew that was a part of the world. And he knew that was a part of the world. And also, we know that uh, that one of the weapons you can choose, and it's a pretty darn good weapon in the game, is a garrote, right? You know, a, you know choke people to death. Um... <sighs> So there would be moments, not often, but there would be moments in the game where, you know, someone would choke somebody and I, you know, I'd suck it up. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, it's, it's fine. It's just part of the game. But every so often, as role players tend to do, we tend to get, you know, we might get really into the description of it, right? The, um, the, the cut scene and really describe in detail for horrific measure exactly what was happening in the moment of death for our hated foe. And every so often, the description would get onto someone being dying in that fashion, and I'd flash a signal, and my game master would see it, kind of stumble over his words for a second, but then quickly move it along. And I, I know that there are people out there who would see that moment as something that is horrible, right? But not in the, you know, horrible in the way of, you know, I limited my Dungeon Master's creativity or I forced the game to be something that it wasn't supposed to be. I broke the social contract, but I want to just reiterate that, you know, we worked it out together. We came up with something that would work for all of us without, you know, with the least amount of harm. And I was 
fully willing and you know to leave the game to make sure that nobody else had to feel like they were being limited um, in their fun and that's just not how it ended up panning out we would just you know the other players eventually started to realize to skip past that particular thing they, they started to kind of get an idea of what was going on and we still kept gaming and I became friends with these people um, and you know we had had that had that space to do so and I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say here is um, I know that the types of safety tools that are being presented in the Dungeon Master's Guide or in a lot of other games out there, they aren't for everybody. I know that. And, you know, I, I'm i not going to pretend like I use every single tool in the book at my table, uh, my own games that I run. I You know, we, we have our own way of, of dealing with it. But we did have the discussion to make sure that we you know, we together, the players and myself, or me as a player in the DM, have the discussion of how we want to handle these kind of things. You know, session zeros are great for that, but my brother didn't die right before a brand new game began. He died in the middle of an ongoing game, so session zero didn't quite work. Look, I'm not trying to tell you what tool to use, but I'm trying to say here is I am very thankful that my DM was willing to have that conversation with me, was willing to hear me out and decide for themselves and our group to decide all together what sort of accommodations we can make in situations like this. And however your group does it, if it works for your group, that's great. If you use tools, awesome. If you don't use tools, awesome. Um, you know, whatever works for you and yours. I, I will say if you're running public games with like, you know, people you don't know very well, I think the tools are a good idea, or at least having some sort of signal, because you know you can't you can't account for everyone there. You know you you don't know them as well, and these tools can be really useful in those types of situations. But again, they're not for everybody, and that's fine. But I do truly hope that you are taking the time to find out how to handle mature situations, how to handle legitimately traumatic situations with the people at your table because you know it's when i would start to feel wildly uncomfortable with those asphyxiation moments it wasn't because i was leaning into the fiction and had to be pulled back you know it was because i was being reminded of the single worst day of my entire life and nobody meant to do it it just happens you know you get kind of in the you get kind of in the zone and things just happen so we had a signal and it helped keep things from spiraling, helped keep me from spiraling, and whatever. I'm, I'm very thankful for it. Anyway, look, that's all I wanted to say. Um, you know, Dungeon Master's Guide includes safety tools. Use them if you want to. Don't use them if you don't want to. But most important, you know, whether you do or not, the most important thing is make sure you're doing right by you and yours. Have a good day. I hope to see you all soon.